Hi, welcome back on this new video about YubiKey. And in this video, I will complete the discussion about new privacy guard and pretty good privacy that started with the previous video. Now I will show you some interesting command you can use to uh, customize how you interact with the key. Let's try to perform a simple sign operation. So I have a simple text. I'm copying into clipboard, and this is the simplest thing you can do with Cleopatra. You can use tools, clipboard, open PGP sign. This means I am going to sign the text that is in my clipboard with PGP. I can select the certificate in this system. I have only the certificate that is stored on the key. I press next, and it asks me for the pin. And after I enter the pin, the sign in succeeded, I can press OK. And now in the clipboard, I have a modified clipboard where I have my original message, but with the signature of pretty good privacy. So as you can see, it's uh, really simple. You can do every uh, PGP operation. You can uh, sign file, you can encrypt the crypt and so on. So remember, you are encrypting usually with the public key of another person because you want to send him some secure message. But you can also encrypt with your public key to store securely something. But remember that it's a thing to consider when you use pretty good privacy for storing your secret. The concept is what happens if you don't have the key inserted into the system? So I've removed the key. So the key is removed. I can uh, have a text in my clipboard. I can use tool clipboard PGP sign, I can press next. And it is ask me, please enter the key with this serial number. So it is not possible to perform operation if your physical key is not inserted into the system. And that posts an interesting um, question. The question is what happened if I lose my key, if someone stole my key, or if the key for some reason gets broken? And the answer is you cannot use the key anymore. So it is important to understand how you are going to use your GPG key because it can make a lot of difference in how you will generate the key. In the example I've shown to you, I show how simple is generate uh, PGP keys in your physical YubiKey. And it's probably the most secure option because the key is now stored inside my YubiKey and it cannot be extracted. But the problem is, I can use only until the key is my in my possess. So it is not advisable. I'm not suggesting to use this technique if you are going to use the PGP for long operation. What I mean is if some people send me a secret message encrypted with my public key, I use my key, I decrypt the information and store the information somewhere. If one day I'm losing the key, I will not be able to read anymore all the messages that people send me encrypted with a public key corresponding to this private key, but it's not a problem. But if you're using PGP as an example for storing secret in your system, because you can encrypt everything for with your public key, and so you are sure that you can decrypt only with your private key, this is not the an advisable option because when the key, the physical key is not available, you have no way to restore the key. So it's probably better to use another way of generating your key and still using your YubiKey. The procedure is described in great detail in Yubico site. And it is also suggesting to generate the key externally and it called it the recommended version. And it's not the version I've shown you. And even if this is the recommended version, I really like the option to have the key present only my physical key. So it is the most secure option. There is no way an attacker can extract the key. They should have the key and they should have the pin. So it's the most secure way, but it's the most risky because if you lose the key, you lose the private key. But I'm using PGP and GPG mainly for receiving secrets and it's uh, I'm receiving the secret, I'm storing somewhere and I don't care to decrypt in the future. And also I use GPG for signing my commit in Git for GitHub or Azure DevOps. So 
If I'm going to lose the key, I will simply generate another private key on a new key and I will change the information in my GitHub account telling that I have a new public key. I will publish the new public key into a public directory. I will revocate my previous certificate and I need to tell everyone that I am no longer able to decrypt the key, the messages encrypted with my previous key. So I, it, it is an uh, annoying operation because you need to communicate everyone that you have a new key, but it's not a big problem for me. If you want to generate a key externally, there's the guide. It is really simple. It is a little bit more complex because you need to first generate the key with the GPG expert full gen key. You will ask, uh, you will be prompted with the usual um, question for how you want to generate the key, expire key and blah, 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 blah. And then you need to edit the key and you need to add another key. And you, you, you can go on in this guide. It's a little bit more complex. I'm not going to show you the full detail because you, you can simply follow this instruction. But the concept is you are generating a key external from your physical key. And then you can load in this physical key something that is generated, that was generated externally. So it can be backup. And if you lost the physical key, you can always reload the key into a new physical key. So in the event you are losing your physical UV key, you can always use your private key because you can extract from backup and load into a new. Now I'm going to show you some uh, commands that are specific of your uh, UV key. Uh, as an example, you can uh, type this command you will recognize the Ikiman utilities. This is uh, the utilities proprietary of the YubiKey and the open PGP, it, it allows you to uh, manage and to handle the PGP part of the key. Set touch sig on means that I wanna require touching the key when I'm going to sign something. As you saw in the previous example, when Cleopatra signed the key, it asked me for the pin and then it signed the content and it does not, it did not ask me to touch the key. So I really like to touch the key. So I'm going to use this command to configure the key for requiring the touch. And it asks me the admin pin for changing this option because this is one administrative option. And it asks me for confirmation and that's done. Now I'm again in Cleopatra. I can choose to sign with my key. I press next and it asks me the pin. And now my key is flashing, requiring me to touch it. I'm touched the key. I've touched the key and the content is signed. If you use the key for signing git coming commits, I'm strongly suggesting you to use the option cached instead of on. On requires you to touch the key each time you are performing a signature operation. And if you are rebasing a branch that has, I don't know, 20 commits, it will require to 20 touch the key. So it's not so convenient. Using the cached option, you need to, uh, you, 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 you will ask the system to require touch, but for cache the touch for a certain number of seconds, that is um, usually 15. As you can see now, it gives me error and that happens sometimes when a Cleopatra or other program are, um, use, are using the key. So since I have this, um, this windows open, it's probably that the key was locked by Cleopatra. So. Um, pay attention when you use the key in Windows or in other system. If you have some software that is using the key, it, the usage of the key is usually exclusive. Why am I using this option and why I think that it's important? In my opinion, GPG operations are very, very secure. And you usually have your GPG agent that it's caching the pin, avoiding you to type the pin each time you perform an operation. And this is absolutely important because if you're using for signing your Git commits, you are rebasing 20 commits, you cannot work typing 20 times the pin. So the pin is usually cached for some times. But when the pin is cached, your um, PGP operation can be done without entering the pin. So it is nice and it is good 
that you at least require the touch because if some program trick your system into executing code, if your pin is cached because you perform a PGP operation not long time ago, you can still be sure that the operation will fail if you don't physically touch the key. The only drawback of this approach is that Cleopatra and the PGP software are not aware of the touch functionality because the YubiKey is seen as a smart card, a physical card that is capable of performing operations. So when you're asking Cleopatra to sign something, if you don't have the pin required because it's cached, it is not asking you anything. The, the YubiKey is flashing, so I need to touch the YubiKey, but the YubiKey is flashing and I have no visual indication from the software that I need to touch the key. And that's because Cleopatra and other PGP or GPG software are not aware of the fact that the physical smart card need some pin or anything else. But yeah, it's not a problem because you will get pretty used to it. And this concludes this second video about PGP where I simply show you how to use your key for signing and the option of requiring touch the P, touch your key when you need to perform signing operation. See you in the next video.